Hello and welcome to another episode of This Week in the SFFL from Lionel Lakes, Minnesota. I'm the commission. As always, I'm joined from Brownwood, Texas by my co-host with his three luxury sleds in the driveway, Mr. Mike Paddock. And this week we have a very special guest with us. He's a two-time, two-time, two-time champion of the SFFL. Uh, he's responsible for uh, bringing on several sponsors to the SFFL, including Coors. Uh, and arguably Twit's biggest fan, that's right, Mr. Tim Boncher will be joining us live this evening. So sit back, relax, and grab yourself a cold one. It's your home of all things SFFL and fantasy football. It's Twit's, and it starts right now. Tonight's episode of Twit's is brought to you by Cross Brewery Coors Light. All right. His journey to the SFFL began way back in 1996 with the selection of quarterback Steve Young with the eighth overall pick in that year's draft. He would uh, proceed to win his first ever matchup in the SFFL, uh, beating Tony 24 to nine behind uh, 12 points from running back and felon uh, Lawrence Phillips. And over the course of the next 17 years and 277 games, he would proceed to rack up 139 wins for fifth place all time and collect over 10,000 points. He would also add SFFL championships to his resume in 1997 and 2000. He's uh, number one in your heart, number one or number eight all time scoring. Uh, SFFL Studios are proud to present Mr. Uh, Tim Boncher. Tim, come on in. How's it going? Good, good. Good to have you. Good to be here. Finally. Two weeks too late. How's it going, Mikey? Hey, Tim. Good to see you. Welcome to Kramer's apartment. <laughs> That's right. It feels like. All right. So, uh, Tim, you've... Uh, you made it here. We tried to get a hold of you a couple weeks ago, but uh, you had a little bout of uh, a little bout with a kidney stone, as I recall. Yes, indeed. Almost uh, two that. weeks to the day. So uh, fully recovered now, and, and happy to be here two uh, weeks later. Excellent. Did uh, well, watching uh, old episode of the Twits help you get through that uh, painful uh, procedure there? It didn't help. <laughs> it was. Uh, I'd put Vicodin slightly ahead of uh, Twits. Yeah, so uh, if you uh, if you have a you know a good running back with a bye week, Tim's got some uh, some Vicodin for you. He might uh, might trade, but don't trade him this week because I'm playing him. So, uh, so Tim, uh, just so everyone in the, in the SFFL world gets to know you a little bit better, I'm going to ask you a series of questions here, uh, made famous by the uh, second greatest uh, TV host of all time, Mr. Bernard Pivo. Uh, Tim, what's your favorite word? Beer. Beer. All right, what's your least favorite word? Kidney stone. Kidney stone, there it is. <laughs> what turned you on, Tim? My wife. Okay, good She'll answer. She'll be the only other person watching this this week. Mm -hmm. There's probably a couple people with that answer, too, by the way. <laughs> uh, kidney stones again. Kidney stones, okay. What sound or noise do you love? My voice? Yeah, yeah I do. I watch there, it every week. There you go. Get what, all I can. What sound or noise do you hate? That'd be my voice. Yeah, no, that's me. I'm going to turn the questions over to him in a minute. Uh, um, what's your favorite curse word, Tim? Oh, I got to go with fuck. All right. And what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? I, gotta go with I would like to be a brewmaster. I'm gonna have to talk to uh, to Greg about that. Well, beer is his life. I exactly. So I think he could probably give me a few pointers. This one's obvious, but what profession would you not like to do? Fantasy uh, football commissioner. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> want to, uh, yeah, I don't want to be the. Producer at Twits. Yeah, come up with. I, I've seen what goes into that so far. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, we're about uh, 53 minutes behind schedule here, so he knows how the sausage is made now. 
Mm-hmm. And Tim, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear your God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Congratulations on your eight fantasy football championships. There so you I got go. some work to do. There you go. And That's your Nobel Peace Prize. prize. Being eighth all time in points is uh, is nothing that you <laughs> want in your bio. I can tell you that. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, um, Hopefully, I'm behind you because I haven't been in that long. I mean, there's about five people in the league who've been in a, a half as long as I have, but at most, and some of them are probably ready to pass me right now. All right, Mikey, on the uh, northern tier, uh, we're uh, represented by two beers, obviously. Tonight, I'll, uh, I'll lead off. Uh, Mr. Boncher was kind enough to pick up a bomber of the uh, Lucid Dino for me. Nice. Uh, yeah, nice pale ale, extremely good. And with our technical difficulties, a little bit on the empty side, but uh, nonetheless, an, an outstanding pale ale. So, Tim, what do you uh, have on your end? I have the Stone Ruination IPA, and uh, if you haven't figured it out already, uh, it's a uh, uh, homage to my my kidney stone debacle for the last two weeks. So, I went with the Stone IPA. Very nice. I think I have the anniversary IPA or some other version of their IPA a week or two back, and that was outstanding. So yes, highly recommended on the Stone side. Well, look at here. I'm sticking sticking with the IPAs. I got the Squatters, um, Hop Rising, which is a double IPA, out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Wow. 75 IBUs and 9% alcohol, and mine is empty. After all that crap. So, uh, Mike and Tim, we're going to break, uh, you know, normally we break into our uh, weekly rewind and uh, on tap, but uh, this week with uh, our special guest here, we're going to we're gonna break in instead to the uh, SFFL Top 5, and we're going to take a look at uh, each of our uh, Top 5 fantasy players uh, from 1998 to present. Um, Mike, I believe you came in in 98, correct? Uh, 2000. 2000, all right. But I can, was, I, can, uh, I can help you out there. I can backdate you. Um, and Tim, obviously, uh, once you splice this all together, came back in in 1996. So I'm going to go ahead and lead things off, Mike. We'll start at the bottom and uh, work our way to the top. Uh, my number five player uh, during that uh, little uh, era there would be wide receiver Terrell Owens. Um, you know him now from Reality TV, but back in the day he actually consistently put up uh, 1,200 yards and double-digit touchdowns. At number four, Mike, I'm going to go with Peyton Manning. Uh, number three, uh, Randy Moss. Uh, number two, would be the old gunslinger. I'm going to go Brett Favre. And uh, my number one player during uh, that era of the SFFL, I'm going to go with LaDainian Tomlinson. Uh, tough to match that. I believe one year he put up uh, almost 30 touchdowns. But uh, even uh, in the years he didn't do that, he was... Uh, if I had to go back and look... I think uh, there's probably a pretty strong correlation between having him on your team and at least being in the playoffs year in and year out. So uh, that's my top five. Also, a uh, special note to uh, Tim Wally Lundy, who I saw you have on your roster for a one game back in 2006. Do you remember that? I do not. I don't remember Lawrence Phillips. Oh, really? I had to get every fantasy point out of Lawrence Phillips that was available. Yeah, there weren't many. Yeah, he didn't uh, last long. No, but I, I looked and I saw the name Wally Lyon. I believe he was a Houston running back, and I think you picked him up for one week. So I saw that under your name. and uh, So special, uh, special uh, exception there for Wally Lundy. Google him right away. Uh, Tim, why don't we go to you next? Okay. Um, let's hear your top five, and then we'll once Mike gets his, we'll, we'll sort out our uh, final list. I have a couple more uh, current folks than what you had. My number five was Randy Moss. All right. Um, as far as receivers go, he, it's tough to pick a little bit. You know, he had some years with Oakland, then a return trip with the Vikings and Tennessee and all that stuff. That gets to be a bit forgettable. But uh, early on, he was he was as good as it got wide receiver wise. My number four is actually Arian Foster, and mm. he doesn't have the years in, but few running backs do uh, over that. 
course of time. And if you look at the stats, he's far and away points per game. It, it's actually mind boggling what he does. So number three is Adrian Peterson. Mm-hmm. Similar deal. He's starting to put up the number of years that uh, that put him in that class with uh, Marshall Fox, mm-hmm. uh, LTs of the world. Number two, actually, a little bit of a surprise, you'll appreciate this, is Antonio Gates. KG, you know, if you look not at Tony it, Gonzalez, you sure? No, All because right. if you look at it, uh, <laughs> Tony Gonzalez, well, he's got the most uh, tight end points historically. Um, in almost half as many games, Gates is, is closing out, and he's about 40 points shy. So uh, as far as tight ends go, hands down, uh, Antonio Gates is, was uh, the leader there. So just by how he's distanced himself from the rest of the pack, I had to put him up there. Oh, yeah? And then number one was Tomlinson, All which right. I think is kind of a no-brainer. Mike, why don't you uh, run down your top five for us? Yeah, well, I took a little bit of a different tack here, and I'll explain it a little bit. But uh, number number five, I also have Terrell, Terrell Owens, or Terrell Owens, whatever he's going by now. Okay. Uh, biggest reason was that um, he was drafted 14 years total. And five of those years he was drafted in the first round. And then I actually brought Tony Gonzalez into the mix at number four. He was, oh. He's been drafted every year for 16 years. And as a tight end, he was even drafted once in the first round. So that was pretty impressive. So yeah, that, that. Was, uh, Mr., uh, that was Mr. Tom Ewald. Yes, it was. And then I got a little, uh, little uh, blast from the past. Edron James had 116 games total. In the fantasy world, eight years as a first or second round pick, ten years total. All right. And then I have actually have LT at number two for some of the same reasons you mentioned. First round for seven years, eleven years total. And my number one is actually Randy Moss. 177 games, nine years in the first round as a wide receiver. I thought that was pretty impressive. Here, here's a name that just came to mind that didn't appear on any of our lists. I like to get your best comment. What about uh, Emmett Smith? I I don't know. I didn't really see him up there. Was he pretty much done by then? I don't know. What do you? Yeah, I mean, he he was by around 2000, I think. I mean, he was a cardinal at that. Yeah. Point. So was it that early? The same 2000? deal with okay. like Marshall Falk. Yeah. I mean, if you're if you right. go through there, I mean, he you know he's been out of the league for place Hall of Fame right now, right? So I mean, at least yeah, he's in the Hall. Yep. So Johnny um, Alexander was an interesting one. Actually, yeah. Probably that. I mean, he, he had, was he had, for, he couple, was six right after Wally yeah. Lundy. Yeah. <laughs> the, the tough thing gets to be with those running backs. When you start talking about a long stretch of time, they they fall off so fast. Yeah. And that's the thing is, some somebody got stuck with Sean Alexander. You know, a year after right. his great years. Yeah, he, he scored paid the price. Yeah, he scored like I think that had him. He scored like twenty seven touchdowns right. or something. And then he dropped a squad after that. Yeah. So and he was out of the league within two years after that. Yep. Yours and the uh, NFL. Well, you know, look, look, looking at this board, I'll see if, what you guys think about this. We can argue it out. I, I think LT, uh, based upon the rankings, probably has to go to one. Yep. Uh, probably Randy Moss at two, based upon our uh, uh, our rankings. And then after that, I don't know that we've with Terrell Owens. I would say T.O. We've got a couple of T.O.s in there, right? So put him at three. I might put him at five. And then... I'm leaning I'm leaning towards what Tim was saying, too. I actually had Arian Foster and Adrian Peterson in there at first. Um, Foster, I believe, is averaging 11 points a game. Now, the scoring's changed, which skews that a little bit versus what it was when LT was right. cranking away, but... All right, let's let's put area to four now. Now, when I did these rankings, I actually kind of cut them off. Uh, um, I, I think I kind of decided to do it like to t- 2010 and back. But yeah, certainly if we're going to go to present day, I, I think Foster deserves to probably be on that list. And I didn't realize we're doing QBs because it was a team position, but I um, I would have put Green Bay or Indy because Indy had Peyton Manning for the whole decade and. Green Bay had Favre and then Rodgers. Yeah, I would put Favre ahead. Of, I would put Favre ahead of Manning. And you go back and look at what what he did. I mean, his you know we started in '95, and basically that was basically the the, the cost, cost of his, of his uh, uh, 
his greatness. So I, I don't know what you guys think, but yeah, I, I, I honestly wouldn't argue with any of the guys you would put in, but I would say that um, that far was probably worthy on my list of being the number five. Yeah, I just, I, I kind of left the quarterbacks off just because there's there's so many peers that that at different times put up similar numbers. I mean, you got Favre, Manning. Brady, Breeze, yep. and kind of a group, and I looked at, at players where they really distanced themselves from the rest of the pack, and that was, well, that was the, the Gates deal. Right. Because there's just nobody that's even close to him for a stretch of time. And then Gronk hasn't done it long enough, but he's the only person, you know, yeah. in a short period, he's put numbers up like that. Yeah, I'm pretty glad this is recording, but, um, you know, some, uh, you know, I, I think some of that's you, too. If you think back to 95, I mean, even... Uh, you know, it's not the same league it was back then. In 95, I mean, there, you know, there wasn't your Brady, your Breeze, your Matt Ryans. I mean, it was, what Favre was doing was pretty much impressive. Obviously, he won three MVPs. And so that's why um, I gave, it would probably give a slight edge to him on that front. So, yep. All right. So, yeah, I think we've, uh, I think we've got our list then. Uh, I'm calling it, Mike. I'm calling it. Uh, so coming in at number five, Brett Favre. Number four, Darian Foster. Number three, Terrell Owens. Number two, Randy Moss. And your number one fantasy player of the SFFL era is LaDainian Tomlinson. All other lists are obsolete. And ruination. Yeah, the ruination. Uh, Mike, one thing I forgot to mention is the uh, premium passwords. Uh, current week, week eight, we've got a password of empty. Um, uh, and then starting next week for week nine, um, uh, I use the word tied because everyone in the, the, I believe the NFC, or maybe it's AFC, my division is tied at four and three. Uh, and Greg, thank you. Greg actually, um, uh, submitted an Ask the Commission question on whether that's ever happened before. Uh, and so I have to do a little bit of research on that, so I'll post the, the answer to that out later this week. But uh, I don't think it's ever happened, especially this late in the season, um, that all owners in the division have had the uh, the same win loss record. So hey, you want a parity? You want a parity with the way you changed the draft this year? You got it. Yeah, apparently. Well, I think even the other division, I think it's what a two game swing. Yeah. Bottom line from all that is we need to spend more time managing our fantasy teams and less time messing around with twits. Yeah. All three of us lost. Yeah. That's, <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, there, there may or may not be twits next week, so we'll see how this weekend shakes out. Well, one of us has got to win next week. You think? Watch, well, it'll be the first tie in, in the uh, tiebreaker yardage era, so. All right, uh... Real quickly, let's get to the uh, tertiary favorite topic, uh, Mike Chalk Talk. Uh, last week, the commission bumps to uh, four and two. I uh, had Mississippi State minus uh, a couple of touchdowns against Middle Tennessee, and they uh, routed the uh, Blue Ridge Racers or whatever the Middle Tennessee State team is, uh, 45 to three. It's a boat race. Uh, let's move the commission to four and two. Mike, uh, we're going to actually jump back to the NFL this week. Um, took a look at a couple of games, but the one I think stands out to me is uh, San Francisco. They're going to go to Arizona and uh, take it on uh, the John Skelton-led Cardinals. They're laying seven. Uh, normally, I'm not a huge favorite in a division game uh, with, a, with a road favorite laying a touchdown, but, uh, you know, I watched uh, Arizona pretty closely last week, and I just... Uh, I don't think they're going to have anything for that San Francisco D. I think if San Francisco gets 14 points on the board, they'll cover that number. So I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, Niners laying the seven. Mike, dog of the week. Unbelievable, but, uh, but true. Rarely needs the point. Once again, doesn't need the points. Has Tennessee uh, plus three and gets a straight-up victory there by a point. Uh, in Buffalo to go to six and zero on the year, Mike. So uh, go ahead and uh, dazzle us here with uh, with your week eight pick. Yes, uh, looking ahead, week eight for dog of the week. Uh, I'm looking to go seven and zero, and so is the Atlanta Falcons. 
going into the unfriendly confines of Philadelphia and getting two and a half points. I'm looking for the outright win by Atlanta. So there is your dog of the week. Well, that's just uh, that's a harbinger and a precursor and a segue all in one because uh, we'll move right into game of the week after that. And uh, now that we're running the three-man booth here, copyright. Uh, Tony Kornheiser. Yeah. Dennis Miller. I was gonna. That was, was better than either one of those. Yeah, I was, was, yeah, I was, by ear. I was thinking more like this is a uh, week by week gig. I got Don Meredith. Oh, night football thing. But uh, game of the week, we're gonna go with Atlanta at Philadelphia, Mike. We kind of already know where you're headed with that. Yes, yeah, so you got uh, my pick. Yeah, so let's uh, head over to Mr. Botcher. Who do you like in the game of the week this week? I too like Atlanta. I think uh, Philly's in disarray. It's not gonna take too many Michael Vick mistakes before that uh, Philadelphia crowd starts uh, letting them have it, and that's going to be bad news. So when your offense is struggling, it only makes sense that you fire your defensive coordinator, right? So I think they're, they're going to be in trouble. Atlanta's not going to have to do much to, to win that game. Not so fast, my friends. Uh, Philadelphia will resoundingly win this game at home. Atlanta, you're, I believe you're alone, as Mike, you may have mentioned, your lone undefeated team. Uh, it, it's coming to a screeching halt this week. I think their their pass defense is uh, good enough to slow down uh, Matt Ryan and uh, Roddy Wolfite and Julio Jones. Uh, I, at some point this year, Shady McCoy is going to get on track, and I, I think much like you, and look at the University of Wisconsin. It maybe took a few uh, weeks longer when you fire your defensive coordinator slash line coach, something like that. It's, it's going to be a shake-up, and uh, I think Lincoln Financial Field will, will treat the Eagles right this weekend. So I'm going to, you know, bottom line is they're, they're a point-and-a-half favorite, I believe, right, over the lone undefeated team in the in the league. Two-and-a-half. Two-and-a-half. Vegas knows what they're talking about. Take the Eagles and get it. So I got one more to throw in here because I actually got out of record this week for some betting advice on the Viking game, so I'm going to throw it to you two because the question was, the guy, was, going, to the guy going to Vegas wants to, wants to know, do I take do I the take six, and six and a half point, point spread, spread Vikings, Vikings are, are favored by six and a half, or do I take uh, the over on the 42 points? And I actually suggest that you take the under on the 42 points because I think uh, that's going to be a tight, low-scoring affair. So I didn't, I didn't particularly like the six and a half points. Yeah, I would thought the under was safer. I thought I completely agree with that. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're looking at those four bets, I would certainly think that under 42 would certainly be the way to go. Um, so that should just about do it for this week's episode of Twitch. If you would like to see this or any past episode of Twitch, you can go to uh, vh1classic.com or go to YouTube and type in the keyword Twitch. So for my co-host and producer, Mike Paddock, and a uh, very special guest, Mr. Tim Boncher, uh, we'll see you next time for the uh, Week 9 edition of Twitch. Adios. <laughs>